Okay, I'll be the first one to say it. Fall definitely is here. Besides the temperature being a little bit cooler for us gardeners, we're also starting to notice a lot of things are ready to harvest. Maybe some things are overdue for harvesting, but for the most part, our food is ready to go. However, there's always one plant or plants that are slower, tomatoes, peppers, that sort of thing. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to take them from this to this before the frost hits. Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants, both indoors and outside. And as you can tell from the intro, this video is all about how to deal with fruits in general that are small and underdeveloped with an impending frost in our future. So for some people in the southern US and other portions of the world where we don't have frost in you know a short growing period, this isn't a concern for you. But if you are in a cold climate, whether that be in US or Canada, and you have a limited growing season, then this video is going to benefit you hugely. All the methods of topping a plant apply to any fruit bearing plant. So you'll hear me talk about this in my upcoming Brussels sprouts video. You can do this with peppers, you can do this with tomatoes, you name it. So long as it has a main stem and has a fruit, then you will be able to top in order to help develop that fruit a little bit faster. The exception to this is obviously going to be trees. So fruit trees and fruit bushes will not, this will not work for them, but anything with a cellulose stem that is not wood, you, this will work just fine. So the entire concept is based around redirecting those growth hormones and those maturity hormones back into our fruits below. We don't have to do this with determinant varieties, meaning varieties that have a start and end date that are within our growing season. However, if we have determinant varieties that have a growing season that extends beyond our typical growing season or an indeterminate variety that obviously will grow and grow and grow, then this will apply. What we're doing is chopping off the head where all of our growth hormone is kind of being sent to. The reason it's being sent there is because the main goal for the plant is to develop more greenery to support more fruiting bodies. However, in Canada, what tends to happen, or in the Northern US, what tends to happen is we get heat, 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 and then all of a sudden in two to three weeks, we'll end up with a massive decrease in temperature, just like that, which is why sometimes we need to take precautions to ensure that our fruits develop. The important thing to remember about all of this is that our concern or our focused tomato fruits aren't these big bad boys here that are on the verge of ripening and have already filled out. Our actual concern is these tiny little grape sized tomatoes. Obviously, these are meant to flush out and we need to focus more energy on these little guys to get them into some bigger bad boys so that when they are picked, despite them being green, they will ripen, turn red, and still taste delicious. Remember, frost can creep on us at any time, anywhere. So if your tomatoes are of size and a frost is about to hit, it's time to harvest them regardless of the color bring them inside and set the green ones on the counter, they will ripen just fine. The next question you're probably asking about this is timing. What exactly is the best time to top the tomato? You don't wanna do this too soon and run the risk of stopping any new flower development and therefore any new tomatoes, but you also don't wanna do this too late and run the risk of undersized tomatoes and therefore no pasta sauce this fall. So you do wanna time it correctly. Well, the key to all of this is understanding our zone and our frost-free days, when they start and then also when they end. I've talked about these before, but if you're a little bit unsure, I've got plenty of YouTube videos and I also have a blog post explaining this and going into detail all the different hardiness zones in Canada and it has a playlist of all the different videos that you may need depending on where you are. It also applies to Americans and I translate for both US and Canada 
across the board. I'm in zone three and don't shoot the messenger. Unfortunately, zone three, you're approximately two to three weeks away. You are going to receive your first frost. I'm in the same boat as you and it's around mid September. Keep in mind, this is only an estimate. So while it says it's September, some years it falls later and some years it falls sooner. That means we want to top them two to three weeks out from the predicted frost date, giving us enough time to either vine ripen if the season extends a bit longer, but also giving us a buffer period in case that first frost period comes a week or two early. So behind me here, we have a wonderful tomato plant that has some red tomatoes on it, but it also has some green undersized tomatoes, which are the ones we are targeting to redirect our growth hormone back into our fruit for fruit production, seed production, and in the plant's mind, survival. So the best way to do this is to find our main stem. Usually it's the thickest stem at this point in the season. However, if you are unsure, start at the bottom and chart your way up, going as straight as possible. So long as you've pruned correctly the entire year, it should be relatively easy to find. So you can see I found my main stem and on it, we have tomatoes going the whole way up. We begin to see this section, which is approximately two, two and a half feet, where we have flowers and we also have flowers that have perished and moved on with very, very tiny uh, resemblance of tomatoes. These tomatoes are much too small to guarantee any fruit and therefore we want to redirect our energy back into our grape sized tomatoes or plum sized grape and up sized tomatoes. So we actually want to break off our stem as close to those grape sized or our closest viable tomato as possible. Because remember, we want to redirect as much energy as we can into the rest of the plant. So in this case, the break point is going to be two feet back right here. So now you can see I have approximately two leaf layers here and then my first clump of actual tomatoes and this is my precious tomato portion that has ceased to exist in the world of gardening nothing has to go to waste you can take that top portion and you could do some cuttings from it i'm personally doing some cuttings for this because i have a future video that i'm going to be doing on indoor gardening so if you follow along with the channel you want to experiment with me then go ahead take those top portions pluck off the bottom few leaves off the nodes and stick it in a jar of water. So once we've actually removed the top of our plant, we are made in the shade, we have to do nothing else. Keep in mind that once we remove that, we're redirecting all our creation hormone or hormones back into the fruits down below because now the plant has a signal that it's reached its apex in growth and it needs to put more energy into actual development of fruit. That means full fruit and also ripe fruit. The reason for this is because tomatoes or peppers and any kind of fruit in general generally have a hormone within the plant that ensures that it does not germinate, meaning the plant's goal is not just to produce the fruit itself that we eat, but actually take it beyond that into fermentation before the frost hits, which is why when we top, our large greens are gonna start turning red or orange or whatever the final color is very rapidly. And then our green small ones are gonna begin flushing out a lot faster. If you want to know more on why your tomato may be blotchy or why it's not ripening correctly, be sure to check out the video that I did all on blotchiness and how we counteract that, how we fix it, and exactly why it happens. Okay, so if you've made it this far into the video, it's official. You are now adopted into the Gardening in Canada community, meaning if you have experience in ripening tomatoes in your area, be sure to leave the zone and how you do it down below. People continually say that personal experience is just as valuable as the video itself. Oh, there you guys have it. The complete guide to getting your small little grape-sized green tomato peppers, even Brussels sprouts, 
to begin to bloom and thrive faster so that it doesn't get caught in the frost. Always be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know if you knew that this tip was even a thing or if you've actually never heard of it before. I'll be doing a Brussels sprout video where I talk about whether, like if your Brussels sprouts haven't actually developed a Brussels sprouts yet, how we can go about making that happen um, through topping. So it's kind of a catch-all when it comes to that method. It doesn't just have to be used on tomatoes, it can be used literally on anything with a fibrous stem, main stem that has a very straight up profile, we can chop off that main stem and voila, we end up with more fruit and veggie development along the sides. So that being said, I gotta go chop some tomatoes and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.